before we start talking about before we start talking about uh, the management of dirt, I think that I want to I want to refer to me. One thing is that's very common is that people, in many physicians, even surgeons, equate uh, equate uh, uh, sliding out a hernia with dirt. Well, sliding out a hernia is not dirt. Seventy percent of the people over seventy have sliding out a hernia to a degree, uh, and it is simply like gray hair. We all have it, and uh, we'll get it sooner or later. If we want it. On the other side, uh, GERD only occurs about 4% of the population, even with a severe degree. We also know that uh, from the history of surgery, the people attempted to reduce the hernia and do crucial repair as, as an operation for GERD, and it didn't work, it just failed. We also know from a very interesting study from <coughs> Edinburgh that uh, uh, when they looked at patients that had missing communication, uh, half a year later, half the time the poor repair failed. And what do you expect from an organ that uh, really, that really uh, contracts 12 to 16 times a minute, every minute, of your life. Uh, eventually it will deteriorate, and so does the human poor. So it's not relationship. The only thing that, that is true is that because of the neg negative pressure gradient, if a patient has GERD uh, uh, and or less insufficiency and he has an apple hernia, he will have worse symptoms because the gradient is, is, uh, is negative and pulling it down. He may have worse symptoms, but if the lower end of a gym high pressure zone, which is really the name of the less, the true anatomical name, there's no uh, is normal, you don't have GERD. Uh, and yeah. and the other thing then is that the, the other question issue that I want to put out so is how do you assess success? Uh, as an exposure test, our own tool for making a diagnosis, uh, we cannot, uh, <coughs> and uh, the reason is, uh, the reason is, is that they have a high sensitivity, but they don't have such a high specificity. So if you have a patient with appropriate symptoms, that is, uh, your pre-test probability is high, the post-test probability will be high too, if you have a positive test. On the other hand, it doesn't have it's a, a very high specificity, which means that if a lot of patients can be, uh, it can, can have uh, in normal function, at least the way that they are today, um, <coughs> at, at least the way they sense the function, or uh, have as a varieties of any objective signs with, uh, an acid, oh, with an abnormal acid exposure. Uh, this is not only my opinion, I have to tell you that the, the, the FDA thinks so too. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, really, what is more important about here is, is the clinical improvement. What we need to know is whether the patient is doing better <coughs> and they feel better. If they feel better, uh, they don't have reflux. And you don't have secondary signs of reflux. They are probably the, the cure of their disease, no matter what the pH says. Uh, PPI utilization is plus minus because there is a large placebo effect. And uh, it is an effective sign, an important sign, at least economically important. But it is less important than, uh, than, uh, than, uh, than subject, subjective feeling, whether or not they suffer. And the instrument, the best instrument we have today for assessing that is the HRQM, which has been the most valuable. There are other instruments, and uh, I'm not going to <coughs> say much about them. Um, well, we all know that. Uh, we, that <coughs> we have four days, we heard in the first talk, we have four types of good treatments, and um, 
and it's very important in my invasiveness. Um, last lifestyle changes, uh, yes, they work. But you must remember that, that we are now an urban society, and people travel by train to <coughs> work. And they don't have time to have big lunch, and then have a nice siesta, and then have a little bit more work, and then go to sleep and after a very late supper. And they go home at 5 p.m., and have a dinner in the evening, and go to sleep on full stomach. And this is the thing we cannot change. It goes with the organization, and in the, the best group is that the highest rate uh, increase in Europe is in rapidly in industrialized in countries. It is in India, it's in China, and, uh, and in places where people become more urban. Um, and light on PPIs are, of course, a treatment. But the truth is that at least 50% of the patients who have PPI are incomplete and do not fully respond. Uh, they are incomplete respondents. They get some improvement, but they, they are not completely free of their symptoms. And um, in addition, there are long-term risks, and I do not go into that, but I think everyone in this educated government knows what they are. Uh, so, life on PPI is probably not good for uh, The next thing we have is we have transfer alteration. And finally, we have a thoracoscopic or laparoscopic or open operation. And open operations are not completely dead and gone. Really, the first successful operation over here was. Um, as you well know, it's the lap nissen. And uh, I want to emphasize that lap nissen, or any complication, does not repair the lowest of the sphincter. The lowest of the sphincter remains uh, as bad as it was before the operation. What it does, it uses the stomach to create a new lower, it, a lower high, it uses the muscle of the stomach, or the feeling pressure of the stomach, to create a new high pressure one. Uh, it's not, uh, and the calling it the repair of the less is really inadequate. And um, what we what we see, and the reports that we read about about uh, about the result of this operation, is when it is done in centers of excellence, the results are great. But when it is done in the community, the results are not. Not so good. And in fact, if you think about the fact that, that <coughs> um, the chairman had, uh, had uh, underlined the word rise and the decline of the other operation, even the rise was not so big. The rise was to about 100k operations a year out of 8 million sufferers. Let's say that half of them do not fully respond to PPI, where are the rest? So why do we have so few? I think one of the reasons is that when the operation is done by non-experts, the results are poor. And <coughs> poor uh, to the extent that they actually make the patient worse. Uh, for example, uh, you know, many uh, obesity surgeons, you know, do, people who love, do love them, think they know how to do this. They pass, they make a hole in the pass placida, placida, and then they pass the stomach into that hole. Which means that the rat means that the end result is that the complication is not around the esophagus, but it contains part of the stomach. Now, this is not a good and good procedure because when because once you include the lesser character in your in your rat and you try to swallow, the rat will open up. And um, so that's one reason. The other reason is that the study that you cited. The, China side that shows CPI 60% that 60% of them to PPI. Uh, I don't think that you uh, that you said that uh, this is um, that, uh, that they return to PPI because of uh, they something wrong with their head. They return to PPI because they recur, and they recur because the majority are not done in centers of excellence. And if you look look at the results from centers of excellence, you don't see the great performance at all. 
after 10 years, and not to try it. But the study was very influential because it showed the result in the community. And, um, and therefore, dust and drugs do not refer patients for surgery. And because they do not refer patients for surgery, we don't have cases. So the solution must be different. Uh, as we mentioned before, we, uh, we, we described the, uh, the links. The links have the same idea as the angle cheek procedure. Uh, angle cheek just didn't do it as well as links did. And uh, you know, 100,000 of them were implanted of the angle cheek. And um, almost all of them had severe, severe dysphagia. And there were quite a few, a large number of them, those who sort of eroded them into the stomach way to take them out. <coughs> I think I took out a few myself. And uh, so this was not a good solution. But the link seems to be a much better idea. It's magnetic weight, and it's already been talked about. And because it's magnetic, it allows the food flux, it allows some flexibility. But, um, and, and it works very well. However, we links in place refer. It's still a laparoscopic operation. And people don't like scars. You can, you, uh, I'm sure all of you will, will know, know from our experience, that, that we all know that uh, the error melatonin plus modified error plus a different application are much better than balloon dictation. <coughs> but how many headers, header monotonies do you get to put it? Most people are still treated by balloon dictation, even though the American Gastronomy Association changed their recommendation last year. So, whether links will increase referrals or not, I don't know. But one thing I can tell you, if you increase the number of surgeons, you can do that. Because it's, not, it's much easier to do uh, the links and to do a good missing. And maybe it will simply <coughs> reduce the number of people, just the number of referrals for missing, because people refer to local surgeons and can also quickly learn how to do how to put in the beads. In addition, the people who put in the beads can also make good may also be making mistakes, like I described before, putting the beads in the wrong location or including the stomach, and then the patient will be worse. At least the beads are easier to remove. Uh, so remaining with, uh, we remain with transferable, transferable operations along this line. And currently on the market, there are, we have three. There is the Strata, uh, and there is the Ezefix that we heard about. Only between them, they've done more than 20,000. And patients. <coughs> I think that the stud has a long term problem. And as a fix it about a similar number. And then we have uh, the new one to which I am uh, <coughs> related, which is called the news. Unfortunately, we only get hundred, about 150. So, uh, but I can tell you that all, all of them are C mark, FDA cleared, and uh, all of them have to, has to have to be done on selected patients, and uh, uh, the safety and efficacy is approximately the same as that as laparoscopic from the medication in terms of quality of life and PPI use uh, on all of them, uh, <coughs> depending on many conditions. Strata is very interesting because this is the uh, the only it's actually the only procedure which affects the lower resistant cell. All other procedures do not. I mean, they do not do anything other than put the ring outside the less or reinforce the less and <laughs> create a new lower resistant high pressure on the sound. But straight down, there is very good evidence that mm -hmm. it actually affects the, the, the less itself. In blunt sensory nerve, uh, that was one of the, there were several theories in how it works. Some people that it said it's not sensory nerves. No, that is not true. Because if you play with blunting sensory nerves, then the effect will be immediate. What we know about strata is that the effect begins at three months after the procedure. 
Uh, <coughs> it's probably due to... Dr. Shapiro, if you could sum up pretty quickly, because we didn't want to have time for questions. Okay. I will rush through and time is up again. So, um, uh, you mentioned the ESOFIX. Well, the ESOFIX in its current version, it comes to several communities, is not really uh, what we call a fund like classic fund importation. It's really more like a Belzi Mark IV. Does anyone remember that? It's, uh, this is how it really looked like. And, uh, uh, and fasteners are unique. The results are, as I told you today, like everyone else, they are doing very well. Uh, it's not available in Europe anymore. I'll tell you a little bit about the news. Um, and um, it's a single patient. What you see on the left is, is, is completely disposable in the sort of way. Um, the basic principle is that we use um, both video and ultrasound input in order to guide the uh, device into a position about three centimeters above the areas and uh, staple it with the green staples, the right staples that are identical to the other switch in green. Uh, and staples, we put four, two to four quintuplets around this office. And um, it's not a simple procedure. We require skill and advanced endoscopic procedures. Uh, patients, uh, we should not allow patients to retch after this procedure. And it's common because the fetus stomach is air. And therefore, we can use the, uh, at least class three in the American Society of Anesthesiology recommendation. And it has to be done under full muscle relaxation. And we have a unique way of reducing uh, iatal hernia, and that is by giving heat. We start with peak of seven centimeters of water and then increase it gradually to 15. Uh, and if the patient has a sliding, a true sliding iatal hernia, Simply slide into the abdomen because of the increased thoracic pressure, and it's very nice to see how it disappears. And as far as we are concerned, the size of the hernia doesn't matter as long as it can slide all the way back in. So we have uh, essentially uh, we have new options for the We have for the, for the patient with mild to moderate hernia, we have um, strictly high risk and. Uh, the not to PPI is an excellent solution. It takes time, so they have to accept it. Ezofix and maybe links is good for mild severe esophagitis. Severe uh, and frequent, uh, severe patients with irreducible back from the new the hernia is the last one. And uh, for the in between rate with some overlap, is the place for the news. Thank you.